Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a deck review, proper unboxing of the Everyday Enchantment Tarot deck, Finding Magic in the Mitts. <laughs> While spilling coffee everywhere. In the midst of life. Um, Get rid of that bit of coffee there. Uh, oh, I've got so much to say about this beautiful deck. Speaking of beautiful things, check out these gorgeous flowers I got next to me. This isn't even like an influencer thing. I genuinely feel like I have just like uh, average normal person referral link if anyone's interested in getting a, a bunch of gorgeous flowers like this. Um, they randomly do this thing where you can get £10 off if you get referred to by a friend. And hey, you're all my friends, so if you wanna use that link, I don't even, I think just one person can use it. If that works, I don't know, first come, first serve, I suppose. That wasn't planned. That was a bit of a spontaneous little plug there. Today, I'm going to be unboxing this lovely deck, which I have had for a while now. I wanted to use it on a few people, use it on myself, have a lot of experience with it, and see how I really felt about using it because as much as I want to do a first impression video, I feel like it's more educational to do a experience, like a video that comes with experience. It was created by Poppy Palin. So the reason why I picked this deck was for many reasons to be fair, but the number one was the fact it is based around everyday lives. And those of you who know me probably know that I love a deck which is relatable. Tarot has this funny way of wording things in a very old fashioned manner, like traditional tarot, the traditional Rider Waite deck is the deck that I tell everyone to start off with because it's the deck that most um, books that teach you about tarot use and refer to. So it's good to kind of be, to start on the same page. But the only problem with it is that it is quite old fashioned and they wear old clothes. They, had, they have old ways of living and older priorities, priorities that we don't think about these days and it can kind of skew the meanings a little bit and make it hard to link those definitions to what that could mean to us today. If someone used their cards to work out what they needed to start their business, to start their new career, and the, the definition behind the card they pulled are all very old and um, outdated, it's hard to link that to what that could possibly mean. Even the language a lot of textbooks use um, can also be quite intense. So you get a card, you might pull a card for a very mundane question. A lot of the time when we read our cards, they're actually for mundane things such as, how will my date with Frank be tonight? That's a weird choice of name because that's my dad's name. And then they pull a card, you might flip to that card in your learning tarot book and then it comes out of all this like old fashioned language and deep meaningful philosophy on something that you have no idea about. It just makes it very unapproachable and out of reach and you just kind of feel a bit isolated reading stuff like that when you're just trying to start out and you're like, I just want to know how my date's gonna go, I don't want all this dramatic stuff. Which is why I love decks like the Everyday Enchantment Tarot. I also am a big advocate for the modern witch tarot deck. I reviewed that when it first came out. Big fan of it. I was waiting for it to come out for ages because I loved how approachable it was, how the clothing is modern. She focuses on more of like a fashionable vibe, whereas this deck is more kind of realistic modern. So it's like different classes and fashion choices, like from different cultures. Um, as you can see in the front here, you know, there's some more kind of glamorous people. There's some people who probably don't wish to wear clothes at all, like very spiritual kind of people. It's a gorgeous way to, do, to present tarot for beginners. And yes, this is a deck for beginners because it makes it so easy to understand. All of the images in the cards are not exactly what you would expect to see in the traditional Rider weight deck. So that is a bit of a warning if you are learning, but it's not too far, you know, the meanings aren't completely different. Sometimes I buy a deck and I'm like, these meanings are weird and not what I'm used to. These are like staying in the same meanings in the traditional way that we all know, um, but it adds a nice little spin 
Um, there's a few little changes which are really nice, but the hints are there, the cups are there, the, all the elements are there, the wands, etc. But included in a really in a clever, interesting way, like it kind of feels like I'm reading a storybook when I look at these cards because there's so much to look at. It's, they are big cards, so I would say you could probably treat them better as oracle cards. I don't tend to read this from this deck very often because I usually do big spreads. And you can't do big spreads with big cards in my opinion because there's just a little too much going on so i like just to pull one card from this deck sometimes as a piece of advice or some you know just a one card spread profound wisdom is made accessible with this contemporary 78 card deck and expansive guidebook the guidebook in this thing is incredible which demystifies the traditional tarot without losing its essential magic or structure. Exactly. Couldn't put it better myself. This down-to-earth yet captivating tarot reveals the extraordinary in the ordinary, reminding you that there's nothing humdrum about everyday life. You will see characters in this deck that will remind you of your family, people that you know, situations that you recognise. That's what makes it so great because I always say the biggest bit, the biggest piece of advice I can give to someone learning tarot is to see yourself in each card because it helps you read the card because you can relate to what the character is doing in the card and that can make you more fluent in talking about what the definition of the card means and how you can translate that into what the question was that you asked the deck in the first place. The distinctive cards depict recognisable characters of all ages, appearances and abilities as well. Well, I believe there's some characters in this uh, in wheelchairs, for example, um, providing insights and inspiration from people just like you. So it speaks about what I love about the book in this deck. So this deck is, as you can see, the box is really big um, because the book is really big and also obviously the cards are really big. So you get quite a lot for your money, like this big, huge, so I'm not yet going to tell you what it is that it mentions about the book because I kind of want to surprise you with that because it's just very incredible. But then there actually are some fairies that you kind of have to spot in the card. It's usually like a spirit fairy that's like causing chaos or even helping the situation. So I love the idea of finding magic in the mundane. That's literally my whole life. <laughs> my new thing at the moment is finding magic in everything because a lot of people will say magic doesn't exist and there is no such thing as magic and that blows my mind itself because I'm like look around you magic is literally happening everywhere and I think people overlook it because they're used to they're used to things they're used to seeing things work and how great something as simple as the rain falling on my window right now it's magic it's beautiful and we just take natural things and, and even non-natural the stuff that we create as humans we've created and made come to life as humans magic how can you not see that as modern day magic anyway <laughs> i'm going off on a complete tangent now but let's open up the deck and we shall see this wonderful book which i'm so excited to tell you guys about it tells you a little bit about poppy palin here She's written and illustrated 10 books, but her artwork is really interesting. It's very sharp and high on contrast. It's very striking and bright and bold. And I personally think this deck is her best work. It's one of the biggest tarot deck textbooks that I've ever seen come with a deck. It's almost worth buying just for the book, honestly. If you love a really grounded definition and you like something, like it's very friendly and warm the way she describes each card. She said here, I've aimed to offer something special that won't flummox the newcomer or bore the expert reader. So I love that she found like a fine line between the two kinds of people, how you can use it. And then she's also got kind of cards, she's got a page called Cards at a Glance, which is the major arcana in keywords, which is really, really helpful. I've used this a few times when I don't really wanna go into massive detail, I just kinda need a reminder. And then that's when it begins with each card. And starting with the four, I wish I could talk to you about this book all day long because there's just so much to say. But what this book does, I've never even heard of doing before and it speaks so true to how I approach tarot and I always say to people, the best way to learn a card is to step into it 
pretend you are the fool. Pretend you are about to go into your day as the fool would. Act before you think. Today, dress like the fool. Today, try and even get someone to call you a fool and make that your challenge by the end of the day. And quite similarly, what she has done is she has included within these like, like look two pages of a definition of each card like that's a lot of information you're getting which is wonderful but there's a big chunk in the middle here which is supposed to be written by the full character himself he's speaking in first person so the fool is saying don't be afraid i'm not so why should you be you can see me as hopelessly hapless or as a ridiculous jester. I don't mind. I'll just smile and nod because you can't hurt my foolish pride or dampen my irrepressible spirit. The sky's the limit, or is it? We'll have to see. Here goes. So <laughs> there's more, like obviously there's a lot more than that, but I'm not gonna read all of it. And you can kind of read that while looking at the, the character's face in the card and it just adds a whole nother element to the, the card forever. Like you will remember that time that you read what the fool was saying to you and, and the kinds of things he would speak to you about if you could have a conversation with him. It gives you keywords at the top as well as a quick little um, memory refresh which is really good because sometimes, I mean, when you're in the middle of reading, you don't want to have to sit and read all of this, but this is good to do maybe before or after you, um, when you're studying, basically. So it breaks down the, the image, so it tells you what the image is and all the things, the symbols and signs, what they all mean, which I find really helpful because I love, I hate it when you have a deck and then you, you spot something in the image and you're like, what does this part mean? And the book never mentions it and you're like, I really want to know. I know that's art at the end of the day, it's supposed to speak for itself, but I just love knowing what an illustrator is thinking when they're illustrating stuff. And then you have the story, which is when the person's speaking, and then the meaning. So it's kind of more of the, the definition behind the card um, from her point of view and also like traditionally. Number one, the magician. And also there's like a little tagline underneath each one. The fool, jumping for joy. The magician, being the change. The high priestess, dream on. Empress, lots of love. So in a way, it's sort of like reading little letters. So let's look at the magician. The magician says, what an achievement. It's amazing what we can do when we put our mind to it. I never doubted I could transform this barren, unloved space into something alive and blooming because in the card, he's gardening. The magician is represented as a gardener, which is such a good choice because the magician is planting a seed of intention and he wants to grow something into fruition, exactly the same as a gardener would. And I love including gardening into magic stuff. I've done a video on that exactly once before. And also, yes, there is an image of the card in every single definition which I think is also really helpful because sometimes we need to like quickly refer to what it means. Sure, it is in black and white, which is a bit annoying, but all gardeners are magicians to some degree. It just depends how much focused intent we invest. My role is to empower people to harness their own creativity and use their will to make dreams come true. Take my boy here. So he's got a little kid next to him that's kind of watching. He's being brought up around lots of can-do folk and given the confidence to achieve whatever he wishes. With the encouragement of committed, resourceful people, he'll be able to live on purpose and bring the magic back to life. And then it goes into the meaning of it when it's not in first person, so it just kind of says the transformative magician is inspiring in a different way to the full. He shares the qualities of self-belief, bravery and boldness, but uses them to achieve specific constructive ends rather than trusting to fate. So that's good how it kind of compares the previous card or maybe the card next in order of the tarot. we have got the emperor. You'd like to do business with me? Let me share my approach so you can make an informed decision. With me, what you see is what you get. I'm the real deal. I'm a principled man with decent moral values, including courtesy. That doesn't make me any less dynamic, just more committed. So the strength card is called Braveheart and she's in a wheelchair. She says, do you marvel at my strength or lament my disability? I hope it's the former as I want no pity. I welcome the challenges my body brings as they've made me the fearless, passionate being I am today. And I feel sorry for you if you can't appreciate that. She also refers back to the rider weight quite a lot so if you look at the paragraph that describes the image the rider weight hermit is depicted as an older 
bearded figure in a grey cloak, giving the impression of years having created his understanding. But here, a man of indeterminate age sits over a book amassing his knowledge from intense study. His hair and brows are white, so he could be middle-aged, but his posture is upright and youthful. This man also wears simple grey clothes, a casual top and bottom he may wear for bed, and his feet are bare, suggesting he's comfortable staying in. So it's a very like warm, cosy, you know, homely card as the hermit, because it's more kind of relatable when I get the hermit for anyone. I always say, have you been staying in a lot, studying, making big decisions, folk like reflecting over your life. So yeah, um, you kind of just go through all of the, oh, the swords are the blades in this deck. Cups are cups. Uh, pentacles are coins, but that's not too different. Um, something else I really like about this deck is the fact it is based in the UK slash London. It's all different cultures, but the actual location, I believe, is based around where I was born, like where I was brought up. Um, not central London per se, but like um, I spent a lot of my childhood and growing up in London so that was also a really nice extra bonus for me to to recognize and I could you can see it in certain cards so this is the back of the deck absolutely gorgeous it looks so vivid and striking and kind of like <laughs> it looks like it's almost inspired by some sort of trip <laughs> <laughs> this is how thick it is. It's so big and thick and um, you can't, you know, you can't bend it together when they're, when they're all together, which sometimes people like doing when they uh, riffle, shuffle. You just, you just can't, <laughs> there's no point even trying, you rip your little hands off. So once again, I do prefer using this as an oracle and shuffling sideways like this might be better for you with this deck. Um, it is quite soft though, the laminate, laminate is really nice so it does kind of glide so it doesn't feel stiff which is good and then you can just pull cards like that. You could probably shuffle this way as well but oh god it's a bit harder, I'm stretching my hand. I've got quite small hands to be fair but if you've got small hands this deck might not be the best for you. And if we're comparing this deck to the traditional look at the size deck but that does mean you can get lost in these cards a bit more. I like how they're big enough to see all the details because some of the details would, would literally just go wasted because you can't see it all. And then the thickness of each card. The, actually, like the flexibility is pretty good. They feel somewhat flexible. Maybe if you've used them for a while as well, they, they become a bit more flexible. But I've got quite stiff cards. Like I've got cards stiffer than this one. So it's good they've got a little bit of flex. So I think some, some of the laminate has bubbled a little bit where like I've kind of collided the cards together a couple times when shuffling but that's my own fault um, but they do feel very soft rubbing together I'm just trying to think of all the things that people might care about how I can describe this is like when you shave your legs and your legs feel really smooth so what I'm gonna do now similar to my other deck review and if you haven't watched that yet then I'll leave a link down there but I'm going to show you every single card um, on the right of the screen or left, I don't know. I'm just gonna go through my favorite card, and my favorite, this is gonna be so hard to pick, like I love them all, but I'm just gonna talk about some cards that I think I really like for whatever reason. So there goes, nothing I guess. So let's start off with the Emperor. Look how warming he is and welcoming he is towards you entering his office he's got his hand out he's ready to shake your hand um he he looks like he's ready for business um but he does have a family picture behind him so even though you can focus around his very business way of thinking in life he is also family orientated too because he's the emperor there's also little um hints at at what sign the card represents so you can see the Aries sign there he's kind of a very firm you know formal structured man as you can tell but at the same time he's very friendly he's very family orientated depicting Emperor very well <laughs> the chaotic knight of wands on a motorbike freaking everyone out you can see everyone behind him going oh my god what's he up to now uh, they don't know whether he's coming or going what damage he's gonna cause he looks scary erratic passionate and he just wants to have fun he's very excitable um but at what expense perhaps 
the lovely, lovely strength card. She shows that there are no such thing as limits and things that hold you back. Once again, she looks very welcoming and just lovely with her little dog companion there instead of the traditional lion. As you can see what I was saying earlier about those fairies up here, they're dancing, representing um, movement maybe, and that kind of, you know, powerful stance of being limitless and open and ready for adventure. So something I need to mention as well, when it comes to the elements in this deck, some are very cleverly placed into the card. So all of the blades aren't gonna look the same, all of the cups aren't gonna look the same, all of the wands aren't gonna look the same because they're represented by different things. So in the two of blades, they are knives um, because she's a mum, she's at the kitchen table or whatever, and the knives are crossed together making like an X, which is really powerful. And her hands also make that kind of X, like nope. And they're on top of some bills here that she needs to pay and she just, she doesn't, she can't do it. She's stressed, she's in a very stagnant place. She doesn't feel like maybe she's, she's financially ready or prepared. There's also people arguing behind her, like her kids. She's in a very chaotic environment. Maybe she, her house isn't, isn't tidy. She doesn't feel on top of things. There's some orange juice that has spilt, has spilt over as well. The two of blades is when there's a blockage. So she might feel a lot of blockages in our life at that certain point. Um, also the kids arguing behind her. I always see the two of, two of swords is like, when you're in the middle of an argument and you're like, I don't know what side to take. I don't even, I'm not ready. It's like feeling overwhelmed and needing just to, the two of wands is a very this is probably the card that i find the weird like not the weirdest but the hardest to kind of understand and follow because it's very different to what we're used to notice how um clever it is that she's chosen the two uh wands to be his drumsticks and it, the world the globe is included on the drum there and he's got this audience here that's kind of like applauding him so it's still that networking is involved with this card. It's more about beating to the sound of your own drum or whatever that phrase is. Doing it in a way that's best for you and being not being afraid to um, stand out and not wanting to blend in, I guess. I guess global recognition as well, because he is in a band. I love the Ten of Wands. It reminds me of me at uni. Um, the wands being the pencils in the pot and then you can look at the time behind her and you see it's late at night and she's stressing, she's got a coffee there. She does not feel prepared for maybe tomorrow's deadline. <laughs> There's even a Monsters Energy Drink reference, so a very British thing in the Nine of Wands. And this is interesting because the wands are very subtly put in the the fence behind him they're all laughing at him pointing at him and he could possibly fall into the trap of feeling like he, he isn't capable and he can't you know continue on and deal with his battles and struggles because they're pointing at him because he's got like a broken arm he's quite injured and he's just continuing to walk past him and say like keep on laughing like i'm doing me and i've come out of this battle whatever he's gone through stronger than ever whether you are gonna laugh or not the three of wands their sticks the travel this is very much about travel and going on a journey after that two of wands process of making plans the three of wands is getting ready to go get them tiger and there's also a view that this person's clearly seen and they're like look there's a view out here we can see where we're going and the three of wands is all about your horizons opening up and you being more aware of what's ahead so the empress is such a Quite similarly to the Emperor, uh, she's very welcoming and she's got, but this time it's like she's got her hands open. It's a lot more feminine, mummy vibes, like a typical kind of stay at home mum. Like, look how like she's got her arms open for a hug. She's got kids around her. She's got this kid wanting to jump up on her. She's in the kitchen. She's got a little uh, poster behind her, probably drawn by one of her children with a love heart on. There's a bunch of roses behind her here that could possibly be sent from her husband who's at work. I feel like this image makes you think of someone that you know in your life who is similar to her. You know, always cooking something up in the kitchen, always welcoming, has a spot for you on the sofa somewhere if you need to ever pop in for a chat and a heart to heart. She's very supportive, very busy with the children all the time. I want my children to grow up in a delightful, loving home, and I feel sorry for those who aren't brought up with genuine affection. I'd adopt every child in need if I could. 
So the lovers is this lovely little old couple. Look how cute they are. Looking into each other's eyes. There's even a dog there and there's even like a younger couple behind them which is making me think perhaps they could be a younger version of these two or it's just saying that love comes in all different types, whatever age and also there's a dog down here who's looking up maybe at his owners with a look of love and affection in his eyes. There's some cherry blossom. There's also like a guy who's running towards the two here that are in love in the background maybe that's representing love that maybe we aren't able to pursue Ooh, a love triangle plays out as a hip teenage couple share a kiss in the park oblivious to another young man reaching out towards the pink haired girl so i guess the lovers could be about a love triangle too the hanged man is so creative it's a boy at a bus stop. He is amongst all these people who are stressed and probably because of a delay in the um, bus times and the hanged man can be about delays. Oh, and timing too. But the interesting thing is the kid has decided to see that situation differently by hanging himself upside down on the pole and having fun in the moment. So instead of stressing about the fact the bus is late, there's nothing that stress is going to do to that situation. It's just going to add more crappiness to the situation. He's making light of it and saying, this is out of our control. Why don't we have fun with what we can around us? So he's utilizing the bus stop as a play area, which I think is so creative. Do you see what I mean by the fact that she's really geniusly made things still make sense, like in a different context, and she's played them together really well. Even the little fairy next to him is having fun and hanging upside down and chilling out. And it's good to look at where, she, where they are because they're in every card, because a lot of the time they are representing the major part of the image, um, such as in the Seven of Blades, you've got a little evil one holding that laptop and because the seven of swords is often about someone being sneaky and sneaking off being secretive so a lot of people see this card as thieves people nicking something so this is a literal burglar and he's walking out of someone's house to smash windows there he's got all the belongings in his hands and he's running off with them the, the blades are the, the fence behind him and people have caught him so these people actually know like he's run off of these belongings. One shocked young boy holds a football that could have smashed the window while the older lad is angry to have been framed. Okay, so they've, they've both done naughty things actually. Um, Knight of Cups, the very romantic messenger. She's chosen to do it in the form of um, music and singing because Cups is about creatively expressing yourself so I love that and also Cups is about telling your feelings to someone so it's almost like they've kind of locked eyes in the underground tube and it there isn't anything more than that I love how because with the Knight of Cups it's it doesn't necessarily mean it's thorough or there's anything deeper than the fact that this person's saying lovely words and maybe looks quite attractive. So it's sort of like that quick glance and then walking away from each other and maybe never crossing paths again. So it's very brief, it's romantic and it's soppy and he's got lovely things to say, he's got a lovely voice, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything more than that. Oh, I love, I'm gonna end up going through all of these bloody cards. I love the Ace of Wands because of how much focus there is on the blank canvas, because that's how I see all aces. They're just potential at the end of the day. They aren't anything yet. It's more saying like you've got a fresh start, and you've got this chance to kind of throw color all over that canvas. What are you gonna create? The wand is all about creation as well. So I like how it's very focused on holding a paintbrush as the wand, because I often do see the big typical ace of wands where it's just the big wand on the card as possibly holding a pencil, a pen, something that you can write with. So I love how she's really focused on that. And also she's got a view. She's got a lot of things. She's clearly got something there behind that canvas that she's probably likely to draw. So it's kind of saying, you know what you want to draw and create and you know where you're about to go. Are you ready to do what it takes to make something magical today, create something new today? The Hermit, as we spoke about earlier, in that more kind of traditional setting than the more spiritual on a mountain like who really goes on a mountain to think about big life decisions it's more about you know staying in your cozy home reading a book barefoot snug 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 with your dog oh the nine of cups she's got a lot of fine things going on in her life she's got the man of her dream she's got the food the people the company 
Her wishes are fulfilled and I always look at that girl's face because that is the face I would pull if I had all my wishes fulfilled. I'd be like, ah. Seven of Wands is a really amazing, oh, this, this, doing this video has made me want to read these, these cards more often. She's protesting. Oh, the wands are all of the um, policemen's batons and she's protesting about something about the environment it looks like here it's trying to make something happen going against the norm like choosing to make changes and to push against the way things currently are she's passionate she's ready to to shout and make a stand and to stick up for herself eight of blades <laughs> He's really interestingly represented as someone who's stuck in the house with all of her burdens, <laughs> burdens, um, her kid and her dog and the, you know her chores, her to-do list of things she's got to do, making her feel very trapped. However, um, she could always ask for help. She could always ask someone else to step in and help her with this situation. It's about getting her priorities together so that maybe she can have more freedom and you know to get back on top of things before they feel like they're <gasps> suffocating her in a way. I love Six of Blades being represented as a family because at the end of the day because they're on ice skates so they're the blades that skates on their feet but um, this card is so much about taking someone with you as well so it's like having maybe emotional support on a journey that you're taking whether that's physical or emotional three of cups is less about celebrating with booze and and cheersing which is which is what i always think when i see, see the three of cups and this one is more about having a cup of tea how british is that um bonding over something people are going through together with a cup of cha gossiping ooh, like bonding of each other over something together i love that six of coins is very charitable they're focused on this wealthy woman with a wealthy coat on she's got more money than she needs so she's giving it to different charities surrounding her so the blades is represented quite a lot in this deck by people in law and legal figures which is very helpful for people who are learning because i forgot the swords was about law so many times learning tarot so you've got these two figures in court here who are i think he's supposed to be presenting this um that blade here as evidence or something but at the end of the day you're thinking about the fact he's communicating this in court he's dealing with something that is very matter of fact he's dealing with truth um no emotions involved um same with the queen of blades she's dealing with science these figures in the blades cards don't mess around with emotional stuff they're dealing with things that are actually around them if that makes sense also the way she's pointing it seems like she's instructing so my favorite card in this entire deck is probably the ace of blades it is someone who i know it's a bit morbid but it's someone who's doing a x-ray on a dog but i love how the ace of blades is about once again finding information based on the truth of the matter based on concrete evidence things like that so they're looking at what could be wrong with the dog and they're found on the x-ray exactly what is wrong with the dog and the good thing about that is they now know what they can do moving forward they've got clarity the ace of swords is all about clarity so they've gained clarity by looking like this like a new idea it's like a spark it's like yes we found it we understand it. it's you know it's almost like light bulb moment is going off in their head like oh we, we know what to do now we know how to practically move on and to logically deal with the situation to make this dog better and i love that with the moon it's represented by spirits i feel like phantom people spirits walking like down the town which is an interesting perspective I've, I've also noticed how phones for you is in the background i don't know if that is relevant to the fact that these are ghosts of the past because phones for you is no longer um a thing oh the world is a really nice finishing card for this deck it's a group of people knitting this lovely like blanket together and it's almost like about that tying up loose ends feeling that comes with the world it's finishing something together completing something and it almost looks like they're actually knitting the world itself which is really beautiful too oh i love the page of blades as well so when you've got like the king of blades being someone in a high up job in the medical field the page is the student remember and so the page of blades is someone who's discovering science for the first time and i love his expression for that feeling exactly where it's like oh wow look he's getting excited about discovering the snail he's like oh my god oh my god and he's got this textbook out in front of him you can almost tell that he will be like a king of blades in the future and that's where his goals are that's where he's 
you know, destined to be if he tries hard and works and studies and gets to that place. I love it. Speaking of London and this being based in London, the tower is is possibly based on actual situations. I don't know if it's about the Grenfell Tower. I'm not sure. I don't want to, you know, put money on that. I, I don't want to say speak for Poppy Palin, and I'm not sure. But it does make me wonder just the way this is depicted. I love how the focus is actually around her more so than the tower. So it's that like shock, it's unexpected. She's on the phone like, oh my God, how, what do I do? How do I get help? She's ready to like, you know, she, she knows the tower's fallen, falling and she's like, what should I do? Like she's communicating with someone, she's trying to get help. She's ready to like think, she's in shock, but she's also like thinking about what to do. Um, and the great thing about the star card afterwards, which we all know comes after the tower card, because it's that transition from what you have what you know and love crumbling around you, and the star is that recovery phase. It's healing after that tower moment. So this girl is actually in the middle of all the bricks that has crumbled from the tower, and she's offering help. She's like this little star, this little like, you know, helping hand. She's helping people out, um, doing what she can, what she can bring to the table. I mean, people are seeing her as a blessing. She's this guidance. She's this, she's only a child, but she's doing what she can. She's trying to heal people and help people. Three of Blades is also a really lovely card in the way that it's not, I know it is still focused around being broken hearted, but the pins are actually the blades in this situation and she's got them in the heart because she's sewing and she's creating something at the same time while being heartbroken and why I love that is because it helps you focus more so on the fact the three of blades is, is about being creative and expressing out these feelings and not keeping them inside so it's more focused around that side of it so she is using those feelings of heartbreak to make something beautiful and to create and that's something that the three of blades is all about it's like allowing yourself to feel the feels and to go with them and to not let them stay inside too much the devil he's got all types of modern day devil behavior um a lot of money it money is power and it can kind of take over sometimes if we're too um fixated on it um he's drink drinking maybe while driving he's not looking while he's driving driving a death machine while not looking um he has a i would say cigarette but i don't think that's a cigarette if you know what i'm saying he's got drugs in the car and <laughs> there's a person about to cross the road and he's not looking driving down the wrong way on a one-way road so that's just he's just distracted and the devil's about being distracted by the things that have too much power over you distracted by the wrong things in life that seem great at the time but they're very kind of hollow and cheap and they could get you killed so i love how the judgment card um is about moving away from devil-like behavior actually like um alcohol uh, anything that distracts you from your inner calling and your spiritual self because she's kind of choosing to leave behind that life and going towards this guy in the in the open door who looks like he could even be an angel yeah he's got wings he's like playing this music and she feels drawn to it she's like this feels better going out here feels better going away from what's keeping me less connected to my spirit guides and my angels so i'm gonna go out here sometimes i even think it looks like she's dying <laughs> the king of wands is this blind guy who is running a race he knows how to adapt to the situation regardless of what potentially could hold him back he thinks on his feet he's the king of wands you know he's very enthusiastic no matter what he makes things work regardless the seven of cups is is probably the furthest away from the traditional that i've seen in this deck one of anyway because it's actually represented by a tattooist so she's got the seven cups being the tattoo ink and she's creating art on her back and it's almost like it's someone who had who's very creatively expressive remember the cut there's a lot of cups so there's a lot of creative expression there she puts her like imaginations and her kind of dreamy state of thinking into a piece of art so she has all these big ideas and you know she she just inks these like wild things that she comes up with onto people's backs and that's a very different way onto people's bodies and that's a very different way of seeing the seven of cups in my opinion i much prefer 
that kind of environment when it comes to the four of swords look how cozy i want to go there so bad this is about meditation being at peace you know healing having a space to yourself that is probably my favorite four of swords card i've ever ever seen with his bare feet are you kidding me oh not only is he a really good dad but he's got paint all over him he's creative he's a creative dad he's got a mug in his hand representing the cup but the mug on it has i love dad that really helps you understand what the king of cups is all about what means a lot to him same with the queen of cups what means a lot to her the fact she's bending down to talk to this homeless lady to offer her um, a cup maybe um some some coffee to offer her some you know warm words um maybe lend her an an ear it really helps you understand what means the most to all of these characters i'm falling in love with this deck all over again oh justice um, these characters have got into a car crash and they've both got probably valid reasons about why it happened and this woman in the middle is trying to be the moderator she's trying to like take on board both sides perhaps and she's like weighing up the pros and cons like oh god like taking the situation for what it is she's libra energy that's the sort of thing a libra would do they'd stand in the middle and say right i can see where you're both coming from here also notice how every character in this deck has a blue kind of outline around them that's to represent their aura because every living being has it and it's trying to show how we're all as one so even the cat behind this lady here in the nine of pentacles i love this card by the way he has a blue outline around him because we're all as one and you know together she is in her element she's got a cup of tea she's got a book she's got a nice little bit of food there the window's open it's a nice day she oh, I want to step into this card so bad. She's got lots of money there, busting out of her purse. I love that the Ace of Coins is at the very beginning part of creating something physical, such as a house. So he's at the very early stages of that, and he can continue to create something amazing with that opportunity, with that chance, if he just continues being persistent and bold and practical with his ideas. I love that. Similar to the Knight of, of Wands, the Knight of Blades is another chaotic guy who has <laughs> scissors in his hand. He's a hairdresser. You don't want a Knight of Swords cutting your hair. It's scary. He's erratic. You don't know where those scissors are going to go next. She's like, oh God. Eight of Coins has woodwork as a craft. There's a guy behind this lad here who has Down syndrome and he's maybe teaching him how to perfect the craft um, or maybe they're learning from each other. Perhaps it's representing um, how he's putting so much love and care into what he does and attention and it's like therapeutic for him. Page of Wands is a very uh, daring child who's enthusiastically jumping across a river and his friends are like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. But he's a kid with a lot of enthusiasm, what you're going to expect. There's a lot of movement in that card as well, which is what the Wands is all about. This is very British. The Eight of Wands, it literally has royal mail. A, a postman is in the card. You can't get more British than that. And so this represents receiving letters, news, it's movement. So notice how she's got a, a sold sign here. So she's not gonna be in this place for long. She's moving somewhere quickly afterwards. He dashes along to different houses as well. So he's all about movement. Um, there's so much movement even in the kid here. At the bottom, he's running with a plane in his hand, so that could represent travel too. Airmail as well, the the letter he's got in his hand, I, re I recognise that as being airmail, meaning it's come from far away. One of my favourite eight of wands I've ever seen, that one. The two of coins, he's a waiter. Two plates that are very full. He's probably like a young waiter. He has only started on the job. He doesn't necessarily know what he's doing, but he's making it work. He's rocking it. Like he, he's on top of what he's doing. He's just a bit like, whoa, you know, people want me everywhere and Ugh. Page of coins, it's the starting point. The page is a student, is a young person, again, of coins. So what do you first, how would you first make money as a kid? Dog walking doing what he can do with given his age to make money. He's at the very early stages of making money in his life. He will only continue with that mindset he's got to make money at that age. He will only continue being a really successful person and probably end up as a king of pentacles. Once again, if you <laughs> translate that into cups, page of cups, how do you creatively express yourself, express love when you're a kid? Well, you draw for your parents. Uh, you paint for the people you love and she's this little kid has like is seems like she's running towards her mum 
with a painting that says I love you. Oh, oh my god. How cute is that? Death is a very literal card in this deck. It represents, you know, the circle of life. There's an older person talking with a younger person. So you could say they're, they're, they're at very different points in their life, but that's just the cycle of it. And then you've got this spirit. So it's even saying there's life even beyond death too. Death isn't the end, we just continue. And that's what the death card is all about. Temperance, <laughs> this lady seems to be um, trying to offer these two teenagers who probably don't wanna be having moderation and healthy things in their lives, some smoothies. <laughs> She's like that angel who's come, who's stepping forward and saying, you need some balance in your life, guys. They also look very different as people. So like, she's trying to maybe um, make them, you know, the temperance is about blending two very different elements together. So she could be trying to make peace in her household with two teenagers who don't get along. She's teaching them patience, maybe. She has a lot of patience to deal with teenagers too. And the Five of Cups is, a, is very much about um, mourning and grief and thinking of the dead and as much as I understand why she's done that it could be very distracting if you haven't read for, for very long and you see something like this you might think it literally does mean like mourning the dead which it can be but like there are other things that you can mourn in life but seeing someone right outside a gravestone might be a bit like whoa so there we have it that is the end of this deck review if you liked this video then give it a thumbs up so I know to make a review of all the other decks that I've got because it's they're building up but I'm very particular about the kind of decks that I like so I've always got a lot to say about the decks I do have so if you want more of these and let me know subscribe to this channel to be notified every time I make a brand new video I'm on social media such as Twitter Facebook and Instagram I also have a Facebook tarot page so if you want to book a tarot reading from myself over there then send me a message loads of love from my house to yours thank you very much for watching bye guys